and the <coughs> lawyer hollers across the courtroom, uh, Mr. Sprinkle, he says, <coughs> I would like to speak to you after the judge has left the courtroom. I said, why, Mr. Mr. Leicester, what is it you have to say to me that you don't want the judge to hear? <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out in the hall. I, I ignored him. I just went on about my business and went out in the hall. He came out and put his arm around my shoulder. And he said, Mr. Sprinkle, he says, things hasn't been the same around the house since the lawsuit struck. He said, I, could, you, could you dismiss the, just, just dismiss the wives from this case? <laughs> I said, Mr. Leicester, I'll take it under advisement and notify you by mail. He says, well, you're just being vindictive. <laughs> I said, no, sir, Mr. Leicester. I said, it's like this. When I got that citation, my girlfriend left me. My number one girlfriend left me. My number two girlfriend left me. My number three girlfriend will barely talk to me anymore. <laughs> my goldfish died and my cat's got diarrhea. I said, you think it upsets your household? It upsets my household, too. So, see well, you in court. I take my hat off to you, Charlie. <laughs> that, that is uh, and that's a true story. And you really don't have a driver's license, do you? No, sir. And you really, and you've got, you brought with you some citations just to prove to people, if you think Charlie's making this up, uh, let's see if we can get, get this on the, on the board over here. You've got a um, thing here. That right? Not guilty, not guilty, dismissed, dismissed, dismissed from January 10th of 03. It looks like one is you're an unlicensed driver violating 853.7 BC. It's dismissed. The fine was going to be $1,000. That was for the failure to appear. Oh, that was for the failure to appear. No, the unlicensed driver's was $271. Then they had a failure <coughs> to appear on a citation, uh, 12500 DVC. And he wanted hundred and four dollars for that. I don't know if you can you can see it over here, but uh, can you read those charges? I I can. The first one is unlicensed unlicensed driver. Driver. The second one is failure to appear. Now they didn't send me my uh, courtesy notice within ten days of the court trial, so I had my wife call the courthouse and ask about the court date, and the court clerk told my wife that the uh, officer had made a mistake on the date and that they, they had set the date for a day that the court was going to be closed because of a national holiday and that they was going to have to change the dates for my court appearance and they would notify us. So my wife said, well, what if we don't hear anything from you? She, the court clerk said, well, if you don't hear anything from us, just don't worry about it. Okay. Six months later, cops roll up in front of my house and got a $5,000 warrant for my arrest. There was no holiday that day. They court knew I was going to fight the case and they wanted to jack up the ante. That's what they do. So they lied to you. They lie. Our government employees, <laughs> our public servants <laughs> lied to you, Charlie. Yes, they did. It ain't the first time. Naughty, naughty, you guys. Naughty, naughty. You shouldn't lie to Charlie because Charlie takes it Kind of bad. Pretty serious. <laughs> so, so what did you do to him, Charlie? Well, this this bunch I didn't do anything with, was because they didn't convict me. Yeah, well, yeah, they dismissed everything. You were arrested uh, April twenty seventh, unlicensed driver. Then May twenty fourth of o two, they said failure to appear on citation. Want a thousand bucks for that? And then uh, they had you for a licensed driver out of classification. Yeah. Can you get. put those two together? They don't. They don't work. Yeah, they don't work. I, I think they were just. I think they were just throwing mud at you, Charlie, and That's saying, a, "Let's just scare him." Not only that, the unlicensed driver was added four months after the failure to appear summons or the warrant was served, which was a year after the first offense. Look at the dates. Yeah, um, and and January tenth of '03 dismissed. January tenth of '03 dismissed, and the last one was August twelfth of '03. Now. That's a long time before they gave up on that hundred and four dollars. Well, I was I was I was running from the law for six months. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing hide and seek out in the open. I think you the CHP's uh, worst nightmare, Charlie. The well, so, CHP, I have no trouble with. It was the sheriffs. That did oh, that. these were the sheriffs. That and did. he he had a, he was in he was uh, he had he was laying for me. He was. Yeah, uh, he didn't know how to spell my name, but he had heard it a lot. 
And he was going to make a test case out of you, huh? Well, he told me in the barber shop when I told him what I did to highway patrolmen, he, if he seen me driving on the road, he would give me a citation. And he did. And I told him, I told him when he said that in the barber shop, I said, go ahead. You want to go to, you want to go to court with me? Fine. And he did. I took him to court. Did he, <laughs> did he like going to court? Oh, no. Uh, he didn't show up. He didn't no. show and up? He, and he was under subpoena. Under and, subpoena, and yeah. he didn't show up. And I asked the judge, I said, well, put out an arrest warrant for him. He's under subpoena to be here today, and you're wasting my valuable time, so go get him. And they said, no, we'll give him another month. I said, oh, you pansy. <laughs> <laughs> you told the judge, was that Judge Curtis? Yeah. You told well, him. Well, I don't a... know that none of them judges are right. That Rebecca gal was the assistant DA. Yeah, Rebecca she, Batoff. When this the case was dis, when this case was dismissed, she was in New York. <laughs> <laughs> they just make it up as they go along, don't they, Charlie? Anything they want. Yeah. They just make it up. Our, our government's out of control, and I, I'm happy to see Charlie, a man like you, that teaches these police officers and sheriff's deputies a lesson once in a while. Because most of us just bend over and pay the fine because we don't want to take time off to go fight in court. I hear it all the time. Uh, when I'm on the road and they see me out there on the road, I'm invisible. But if <laughs> I walk in a coffee shop where there's four or five or two or three of them, they say, Hi, you, Charlie. How you doing? <laughs> and i go, doing fine, guys. Not a problem. I've had sheriffs sit in my living room and tell me they would not arrest me. Wow. So what would you recommend people do? Tear up their driver's license if they got oh, one? Oh, no, 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 uh -uh, no, no. Educate yourself and find out when you need one and when you don't. Well, you need one if you're, if you're working as a taxi driver. If you're a taxi driver, a bus driver, a truck driver, or if, you're, if grandma's paying you $20 to take her shopping, you need a driver's license. But if you're not getting paid for going down the road, you're traveling for pleasure. You're, you're, that's, the, that's the meaning of liberty. So it's about liberty. That liberty is second behind life in the Constitution. Right. We're guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They will let you get away with pursuing happiness before they give you the liberty. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Charlie. Um, I, I think you're right. Uh, you know, we do just sort of give in too often. If somebody like you doesn't stand up once in a while, I don't. I don't think. I think we'd all be wearing leg bracelets. We are. It's called contract. Licensing. Licensing is a, is a method of the government enslaving us. Anything you, any, anytime you accept a license, you give up freedoms. You know, uh, I just talked to an attorney just a, last week, and he said, yep, I know the judge violated the law. I know the prosecutor falsified the evidence, or actually it was county counsel. Same thing here. Uh, county counsel falsified evidence. I know that this woman uh, had a CPS worker walk up to her door, grab her child right from the doorway, and say, I'm taking it. You've, you've been reported as spanking your child or something. And the woman said it never spunk her, spanked her child ever in her life. And certainly didn't do it in the middle of the street like the CPS report said. She was beating her with a two-by-four in the middle of the street. Well, the judge sees that and he says, but it hadn't even gone to a judge yet. That's the funny part. They took the kid, and a month later she gets a hearing, and, and they lose. And I said to the attorney, well, if you knew all this, why didn't you appeal?